Central bank digital currencies or CBDCs could be the biggest decision we have faced as a modern society. In countries like China, the citizens probably don't have a choice. But in democracies, we do. This will affect us all and our children. We are at the tipping point to a completely different society. And because of the current financial crisis, this might happen much faster than I think most of you guys expect. And the narrative is already out in full force. From the White House. Digital assets, meaning cryptocurrencies, pose meaningful risks for the consumers, investors and businesses. CBDCs on the other hand. A US CBDC, a digital form of the US dollar, has the potential to offer significant benefits. If we take a step back, our society today already has much more surveillance baked in as a result of digitalization. I think with good intentions. And if we have nothing to hide, there's no need for privacy, right? Or, well, Disruption in its very nature is always unpopular by those being disrupted. Would we have gotten technology revolutions like internet or the mobile phone if people couldn't do what they wanted with their money? Or democracy itself? In Sweden, the king used to decide everything. Would we really have been able to change the actual leadership into a true democracy if the king decided what everyone could spend their money on and had full insights into who everyone in the country paid? How much and for what? Well, probably not, right? But surely there will be no need to criticize any governments again, right? Surely that's a thing of the past. Well, during this COVID thing, some country leaders went, mm, how should I put it nicely, batshit crazy. Should it be allowed to buy what you want in that situation? Or should the government in that situation be allowed to take over how people spend their money? Call function, freeze money, parenthesis, all Execute. No one rich or poor can buy anything. They get allocated what they need. Or say a government goes rogue. Some say that's what Donald Trump did, challenging the election results. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but should the government be able to control everyone's money in the entire country through one big tool, one big switch? Or say someone takes over your government with a coup. I used to live in Burma. They had election open, free and fair. Then the military drove in with tanks and took over again. Should they then be able to control everyone's money with a simple central software for the entire country? The coup leader logs in on the master account and freezes money for every individual and every business in the nation that don't support them. Well, coups will get easier, that's for sure, so they will probably get more common. Or say Russia or Iran right now. Is it the right thing to give the central bank absolute, total, central control over everyone's money right into their wallets? Ability to freeze it, take it back from your wallet, decide what you can buy or not buy and run AI and algorithms on the entire population's spending. Find relationships, who is affiliated with opposition party. Should citizens be allowed to buy cheese doodles if they haven't paid for a gym membership first? Or should that purchase be blocked to reduce national obesity and reduce healthcare spending? And wine, how much is reasonable to spend on wine in a month? Cap that and national health will be improved. If we were using CBDCs today, one programmer could put a cap on those with a few lines of code, check it in before the lunch break and voila, implemented for 330 million Americans. People freaked out over Facebook's insights into people's privacy. That's nothing compared to what can be done with CBDCs Technically, what I feel is lacking is the debate about what kind of society we want to build with this technology. When I was a teenager around the time of the dinosaurs, privacy was given because there really wasn't any technology to remove it. You lived physically, you bicycled to the shop, paid with cash from your wallet, salary was paid to your bank account, and that was pretty much it. And separate local IT systems if they even existed. There was no central possibility to keep track of who was doing what, really. And if some crime was suspected, the detectives had to patrol outside the specific subject or get a court order to listen in on his or her phone calls. Here we're talking about tools to prevent the crime before it is even being committed. Because there is a central control over how money can be used. 
That's a good intention, no doubt. Or is this just dystopian science fiction? In this video, we will dive deeper into CBDCs and then really conclude what I think will happen and what I think we should do. CBDCs are the central bank's alternative to cryptocurrencies and their vision for a cashless society. And in addition, and I think this many people haven't thought about, with the current fiat system urgently stressed right now, some central banks see CBDCs as a potential alternative to solve some of the existing problems that we have right now. CBDCs are not just theories. Some countries already have them and about 90% of all central banks worldwide are working on their solutions. Digital currencies have such enormous efficiency, cost and speed advantage over the old legacy system that it will happen no doubt. And it's more and more clear that the competition for the future money will be between national CBDCs and global open protocols like today's cryptocurrencies. When that is the fight, usually global technology wins. But this time it's about money, which is at the very heart of every nation. It's clear that the number of lawsuits and charges against crypto related companies are on the rise. In the US, in Europe and elsewhere. And privacy preserving projects like Tornado Cash got the hard axe. A central bank digital currency can be seen as a digital version of the nation's fiat currency. Like cash, it is issued and backed by a central bank and would be tied to fiat reserves at a one to one ratio. But the digitalization of money didn't start there the world became more and more cashless long before that. If you were in China in 2016 and you went to some rough wet market to buy morning vegetables from some auntie, you'd find that most people would pay with Alipay long before anything of that sort was common in the West. Here is the percentage of Swede that paid for the last purchase in cash. This only goes to 2020, that was already below 10%, but I can assure you that that trend has continued. If you go to most shops or most cafes here in Stockholm, you can't even pay with cash. They'll say, sorry, we don't take cash. You can pay with card or you can pay with something called Swish, which is a bank system. I rarely use cash for anything. And some estimate that Sweden might even become the first cashless society by 2023 already. Many other countries follow the same path. Then COVID-19 radically accelerated this development because both we live more digitally and we became more wary about contact bound transfers. Cryptocurrencies and stable coins have grown in popularity over the last years and central banks must provide digital alternatives or risk missing out on the future of money. They get this. So while they're criticizing crypto with their left hand, they're building their own copy with the right hand. The digital currency will give citizens a cheaper and more efficient way to manage their funds. User would have a digital wallet on their mobile phone or on their computer from where they will be able to check their balances, receive funds or transfer money. And ideally all citizens and companies within the country would exist on the central bank's network. This can then bypass commercial banks. And more centralization means greater cost efficiencies, greater efficiency in preventing money laundry, terror financing, tax evasion, and it's cheaper and more convenient. All good things, no doubt. So how far are we? What is the current state? Here we see pilot, Canada has pilot, France has a pilot, China has a pilot, many have proof of concept, Australia proof of concept, and most are at least in the research stage. Here's another tracker with slightly different results. 11 launched, 15 in pilot, 26 in development, 46 in research stage, and so on. CBDCs are not just an idea. Most central banks around the world are working on their digital currencies. And while some countries are still exploring this possibility, especially the big economies are working intensively on solutions. Interestingly, Russia is working on the digital ruble since 2020. They recently stated that they plan to roll it out in the year of the presidential election in 2024. And while the Russian government banned the use of cryptocurrencies in 2020, 
Now the Russian central bank seems to change its view on that and is looking to legalize cross-border payments with cryptocurrencies in the near future. They already announced in March that they consider accepting Bitcoin to pay for oil and gas. This is not great for the general acceptance of Bitcoin in my opinion. EU then responded by banning crypto payments from Russians to European wallets. Russia no doubt is looking for ways to bypass the financial sanctions on the SWIFT network. China has been developing its CBDC prototype since 2016 already and they started trials already in 2020. The EU yuan is now available in 23 cities including Beijing, Shanghai and Shenzhen and was introduced to foreign visitors at the Winter Olympics in February 2020. To be clear, the EU yuan is not using blockchain technology. It's not decentralized in any way and as I understand it is using more of a traditional database technology. By the end of 2021 about 260 million users have registered a digital wallet, which is about 18.5% of the population. This surged from 140 million in July 2020, but the average balance was very small, like 40 cents or something, which leads me to the conclusion that there are many wallets registered but not really actively used. In total about 87 billion yuan, which is equivalent to about 12 billion dollars. And in 2022 this was reached already in the first half of the year, so this is increasing. The growth rate here is impressive, but we have to put the total number into perspective. The total non-cash payment transactions in 2021 was 4,415 trillion yuan, about 634 trillion dollars. And for comparison, the EU reached the total value of about 197 trillion euro in 2021. With such enormous transaction volume, the EU yuan has a long way to go to play a significant role in the monetary system. If you look at the feedback from the trials then, we see an adoption problem which I think many users will see in the future. The average user does not see the advantage of a CBDC when there are so many convenient other cashless alternatives like WeChat in the China or Swish in Sweden. Some sort of government interference would probably be necessary to drive the adoption curve. The digital yuan is supposed to completely replace cash payments and will be integrated into as many digital services as possible. WeChat which has 1.2 billion users already announced this integration. The government also tries to win more active users with lotteries and things like that. As we all know, China banned crypto mining and cryptocurrency transactions, making them illegal in 2021. And it seems very clear that China wants to ensure that its CBDC solution is the only digital cash solution available. In China, the internet is censored, social behavior is scored, and broad surveillance of the public space is the norm. The introduction of a digital currency on top of that is a practical example of, I think, a quite dystopian future where the movements and actions of every citizen are watched and analyzed. I don't want that society to come here for my kids. Even if it has the advantage to completely prevent crime before it happens, I think it's a horrible society. I think it's not worth that price to pay. Or is it just me? What do you think? Tell me in the comments. The European Union published a working document on its plan with the EU in August this year. And it gives a good outlook on what CBDCs will look like and what implications they will have. And while the EU is still in research, some countries in Europe are already experimenting with the CBDC, for example France. The US Federal Reserve is not quite sure if they should uh, pursue or implement the CBDC, but their instant payment platform FedNow is expected to be launched in the mid of 2023. That platform will allow financial institutions things like instant payments. And this can be a stepping stone to a CBDC. But how does this relate to the inflation and all that stuff that's happening right now? Well, the role of central banks is to encourage economic growth while keeping inflation under control, which they do by raising and lowering interest rates on money or credits. The grey areas here indicate recessions and now I think it's mainly a political decision to say that it's not a recession right now. When interest rates are low it becomes cheap to borrow money and it makes saving less attractive. This motivates institutions and individuals to spend rather than save which increases economic growth. And as more money is added into circulation this process can also drive inflation. And when interest rates are high, you get the opposite result. It becomes more expensive to borrow money. This will drive inflation down, but at the cost of lower economic growth. So central banks have to try to balance these aspects. But 
they have no direct influence on the money supply. You can easily stimulate the demand for new money with low interest rates, but it's a lot harder to take money out of circulation which leads to inflation in the long term. Back in the 1970s, when money was backed by gold, the money could not increase indefinitely. You had to actually buy more gold to cover the issuing of new money. But with the collapse of the gold standard in 1971, a huge rise in money supply started, and that holds until today. Looking at the US M1 money supply, which is the actively traded or liquid money, from 1980 to 2020, the money supply increased from 400 billion up to 4 trillion. Then COVID-19 accelerated this radically with the biggest economic stimulus ever created and brought the current supply up to a whopping $20.5 trillion. The Fed announced already in October 2021, one year ago, that they start tightening its monetary policy. And since then we saw the crypto total market cap come down from 3 trillion down to today's 888 billion. And we also saw the worst first half of a year in over 50 years in the stock market. Still we see the same money levels. The money levels haven't changed. So assets have been sold, but no money has left the system. And on top of that, over the last decade, institutions and individuals took on record levels of debt at low interest rates. That means that central banks are now risking massive defaults not only by institutions but also from countries around the world if they are raising rates too high. This could have catastrophic impact on the economy. No one has missed the surging inflation rates. Sweden 9.8, US 8.3, UK 9.9. So central banks find themselves in a dilemma. The money support has grown so much that inflation is growing within a slowing down economy. High interest rates would cause massive defaults and huge pressure on the economy. And from the perspective of the central banks, CBDCs could offer one solution specifically to this problem. Because today central banks can only influence market behaviors by raising or lowering interest rates, but then it's governments, banks and other institutions that will adjust their borrowing and spending accordingly. But with CBDCs, central banks would be given the power to control the money flow by themselves instead of through intermediaries they could easily destroy and issue money as needed without waiting for the economy to react to their decisions. This last working paper on CBDCs by ECB points out some motives for the introduction of a CBDC. Retaining the monetary sovereignty, which is threatened when foreign currency takes on a significant role. And for the EU that probably means both US dollar and things like US dollar stable coins and Bitcoin. And they also note that while consumers tend to attribute a high importance to privacy in service, they say they care about privacy, but in reality they tend to give away their data for free or in exchange for very small rewards in practice. So they're saying here that people say yeah, yeah I care about privacy but then they will go on Instagram or whatever and give it all away and they will do the same with central bank digital currency probably. And they also note that this enables cutting out the intermediaries and maintaining direct money control. Central bank issued liability should be the safest form of money. While if foreign currencies, cryptocurrencies or private digital money like the Facebook's old Libra Diem initiative, if that would take take over functions of the domestic money, the central bank's liability to act and print money would be impaired. When they talk about privacy, I interpret it as they talk mainly about two aspects. Number one, people have something to hide, some illicit activity, or they need protection against monopolists from the private sector. But what the ECB seems to have forgotten is that the privacy protection laws were first introduced against state surveillance because otherwise you can't have a working democracy. In China it's very clear that having a working democracy is not an objective, then that path is correct. But is that what we want here in the EU or in the US? I don't know, maybe it is, but I think it should at least be discussed. Fact is that it's not the central bank who decides what society we should have, and it's also not crypto programmers. It's the citizens of a country who decide that in the democracy, taking all the aspects into account. Besides transaction costs, friction in financial intermediation is a central topic. 
Currently, banks from the private sector are needed to provide cash and services to customers. In the future, the central bank will have direct contact with the customer and manage their funds. This is an interesting point, because central banks will directly compete with banks then, and banks need to adopt to this new situation. It seems that it's not only cryptocurrencies that are disrupting the status quo. Now, digital money is programmable. You can freeze holdings and restrict assets and put custom limits on holding and spending on the amounts and the location or time. And you can add automatic taxes and transaction costs. You can analyze transactions to find or block suspicious ones. Or you could even set expiry dates and negative interest rates on unspent holdings. But many of these features are already implemented by the commercial banks. The only difference is that then there is an element of choice, perhaps. How do the open protocols stack up then? Ideas and prototypes of digital money have existed since the 1980s, but they were mostly created to optimize payments within the existing financial system. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency that was created in response to the 2008 financial crisis, and its explicit intention was to replace the current financial system. Bitcoin uses blockchain technology to create a fully transparent, distributed ledger that is immutable and readable by all. And the mining process makes it a network structure with no single point of failure, which makes it probably the most secure monetary network in the world. And here comes something important. Bitcoin is getting stronger and more secure with every new participating node, while a centralized software system, on the other hand, is increasing the area of attack vectors the more inputs you have into that centralized system. On the other hand, when something goes wrong, it's probably easier to fix it in the centralized system. While cryptocurrencies work on an open source basis to ensure that developers around the world can analyze and fix potential bugs. But that's not perfect. Bugs happen. The blockchain entries themselves are visible to anyone to ensure maximum transparency in the transaction validation. Most CBDCs will probably not follow this path. Government agencies will have full insights, but the public won't. Bitcoin's capped supply will slowly be generated over the coming decades, with a pre-calculatable amount of Bitcoin entering the market. Currency, the inflation rate of Bitcoin is 1.8%, which is pretty close to the central bank target. And it will fall by every halving. Bitcoin allows you to self-custody your assets, which means that other entities cannot access your funds. Only the owner of the private key can move them, is uncensored and does not follow existing monetary policies. Every connected wallet can send funds to any other wallet without any restrictions. CBDCs will for sure not allow this kind of financial independence, as most plans focus on a custodial solution, where the central bank will have access to all wallets. This is more similar to having Bitcoin on an exchange, where you only have access as long as you accept the exchange's terms and conditions. Now, interestingly, some CBDC solutions are already discussing with crypto projects and companies like Ripple, Stellar, Algorand to build on existing blockchain protocols. While notably El Salvador took a completely different route and introduced Bitcoin as legal tender and other countries are following this development very closely. I think if that initiative survives this bear market, I mean he introduced it at the worst possible time, if they survive, they could come out the door very strong. Now we come into the conclusion. I think CBDCs will play a key role in the future monetary system. Central banks realize that cryptocurrencies and stablecoins are at least viable alternatives for today's fiat and banking system. And in addition, CBDCs can give them an additional tool set that they can use to stabilize the monetary system. And while the possibilities of a CBDC look scary, we have to remember that we already have many of those mentioned features implemented in our current digital monetary system. Banks function as a custodian and they have access to our funds. Funds can be frozen. Tax authorities can have access to all financial transactions and bank accounts can be restricted from sending and receiving funds. Nevertheless, the centralization of such power is mostly a one-way road and we need to be fully aware of how much power is given up. 
Also, I think central banks know that it will not be straightforward to convince people to use this because there are so practical and easy to use alternative for digital payments already. What we can say with certainty is that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and stable coins like USDT, USDC, BUSD and so on have rattled central banks and they are creating their alternative. I think it will be a dirty boxing fight and one of the two boxers actually have a gun. So will the West go the China route and just ban crypto? That's the easy way to win if it truly becomes a battle. Clear is that the narrative right now is definitely going that way. Cracking down on risky crypto. Crypto is risky. CBDCs offers benefits. What I think we should do is this. It is not unelected officers at central banks that should decide what our future society should look like. And neither it is blockchain programmers. I'm frankly not fit to overlook all the consequences of this either. I'm an engineer. I like the technology here. I'm not a society historian. But others are. The problem right now is that they don't even participate in the debate. Because this seems so ticky and it seems so far away. But it's not. It's happening right now. And most politicians aren't involved either. Joe Biden hasn't been participating in producing this statement. Well, it has fundamental impact on how our future society will look like. The action here is to take in how big impact this will have and start talking about it. Start discussing it with your politicians. Bring it up for a debate. That's what we all should do. That's the CTO recommendation. Please press the subscribe button and watch this next. Thank you, Tuck. CTO Larson out. Hello.